What's going on everyone? Coach Aaron here, back in another video to help you dominate the platform. Today we're going to do a quick meet recap of Jonathan Garcia's performance at the recent meet this weekend in Florida. So let's get right to it. What's going on my powerlifting people? Thank you for tuning in to another video and checking out my channel. Hope you all had a good weekend and you're having a good start to this week leading into Thanksgiving. In this video, I want to do a quick little breakdown of how one of my lifters, Jonathan Garcia, performed at a meet this weekend in Florida where he broke the American record squat, the American record bench press, and put up the number three all-time total my IPF. So I want to do a little breakdown of how the attempts were set up, what the plan was, and what changes we made during the actual competition. That way maybe you guys can take some things away from the strategy that we used for this past weekend. And if you're new here and you don't know who I am, my name is Aaron Kamesi and I'm a powerful coach, athlete, referee, and meet director. So I make videos here on the channel to help out those groups of people. So let's get right into it and we'll start with a little bit of background of things leading up. The last time Jonathan competed was at the Arnold Sports Festival back in March. And then when everything closed down or things got postponed, canceled, all that kind of stuff, we didn't really have a plan for this year. We were kind of just waiting it out to see what would happen. And so then we kind of just jumped on this meet last minute because like many of you lifters out there, maybe you're losing focus or motivation during these times because you have nothing to prep for. There's no nationals, there's no worlds. You don't know when nationals is gonna be next year. We don't know if the Arnold's gonna happen at the regular time next year. And so it can be difficult to stay motivated and just you know keep doing off-season training. And so he was losing a little bit of that motivation and said, let's just find a meet to sign up for. So he has something to stay focused and motivated for, plan for that meet to make weight, hit those lifts, break American records, that kind of stuff. So we found this meet that was close to him in Jacksonville and kind of signed up for it last minute once he could figure out he can get off that time from work. So during that time between March and now when we didn't have a plan for anything coming up, we did do a test day in the gym and for a squat he hit a 600 pound squat, about 272 kilos. On bench he hit a 400 pound bench, which is about 182 or 181 kilos. And on deadlift using straps he's done around 600 pounds, 272 kilos. And he's actually done that for reps before, but the limiting factor on deadlift is his grip. So on deadlift without the straps, he has to do quite a bit less than that 600 pound that he did for the test day. All right, so let's go now into the squats and we'll go break down each lift separately. So for the training leading up after the test day of 600 during the training cycle and peaking, the heaviest we hit was about 575 and the week prior to that we hit 550. So based off of that, my plan was for the attempts to open up with that 550 because he hit that in training, it was pretty easy, and it sets us up for around that 600 pound squat for the third attempt. All right, and Jonathan already has the American record squat. It was at 263.5 kilos, which is about 580 pounds. So it's set up well, if we're talking in pounds, to do about 550 on the first, do 582 on the second to chip the record, and then somewhere above that close to 600 for the third to bump up the record first and get close to what we hit for our test day in the gym. Though obviously with the gym, you're using pound plates, no traveling, not cutting weight, that kind of stuff. So at least we got the 582 on the second to lock in the record and then whatever's left there on the third. So, and I'll throw the videos in here as well. And you can see on the opener to 250 kilos, 550 pounds was easy, no problem. So I said, okay, let's go to 264 kilos, 582 pounds to chip his own record on the second attempt. And as you can see, he came up out of the hole in the second attempt and just kind of lost his balance back onto his heels and stumbled back with the weight. So at this point is where we have to make our first decision of whether we stick with the plan or whether we make an adjustment on the day of based on how things are going. And this is the same thing you guys should be doing. And so I was thinking to myself that, hey, if we miss our third attempt as well, then we don't get the record. And we are only stuck with that 250 opener, which is gonna make it difficult to hit a PR total. So if you take the difference between the first and second attempt, it's 14 kilos, and then the difference between the second attempt and our top end third would have been nine kilos. So you can, one way you can think about it is that we're risking 14 kilos to try and grab another nine kilos. So if we hit, then we're gonna get the 23 kilos, but if we miss, we're gonna get a zero, where we can take a middle ground and retake the second attempt which was coming out of the hole just fine, it was a balance issue, and grab a hold of that 14 kilos that was the original plan for the second attempt. So you guys have to kind of do this as a risk reward ratio and what your goals are for that day. If you're competing at nationals, you're trying to win, whether you have to be aggressive or whether you can be conservative and lock in the win or just a PR total. So we had a number of goals going into this meet. One would be obviously the squat record, one would be the bench record, one would be a PR total, and one would be the all-time 
record for a total, which also would have been the American record in total. So taking all those into account, we decided to take the safer route, retake the second attempt at 264, to lock in the American record squat and also to build towards that PR total and toss out that idea of getting that American record total, the number one total of all time, because at this point, that's just gonna be too risky to go after that. So as you can see with the third attempt, we retook the 264, it was pretty easy. You can see that he had more enough, how much more? Maybe he had 270, maybe he had 273, and we could have maybe gone to 273 and he would have improved his technique and been able to handle more weight and execute it. But it's also possible that trying to improve the technique and handle more weight at the same time would have just made him lose the weight back again or maybe not be able to come up with it or some other issue. So in the end on the squat, we went two for three. We got the 264 kilo on the third attempt, which was an American record squat to be his own record by 0.5 kilos, about one pound. So we can call that a success and we moved on to the bench press. In the bench press, as I said, he hit the 181 or 182 kilos, 400 pounds in the gym. And also his PR from Arnold is 171 kilos. So it was a similar plan to the squat where we can chip the record on the second attempt and go close to what he's hit in the gym on the third attempt. Obviously we have to be a little conservative because of the weight cut. So he was around maybe 70 kilos when he did the gym test versus now he's 66 kilos when he's competing in competition. So on a really good day with rehydration and everything like that, we might be able to hit those top ends, but I left space there where we can get the American record on a second attempt and then just take whatever is there to bump it up further. So bench ended up going better than the squat. We hit 162.5 kilos on the opener. We chipped the record on the second, 171.5 kilos. And that went smooth and I said, okay, let's just get a little bit more. Let's not go to the top end because we lost some on the squat. So let's go a little bit more conservative on bench, make sure we get all three, make sure we add towards that total and build momentum going into the deadlift. So I said, okay, let's just do 178 kilos rather than maybe 180.5 or 182.5. Let's go more conservative. We went 178. And you can see there's a little bit of difficulty through the middle, but he was able to fight through and lock it out. So he went three for three on the bench press. We broke the American record on the second and third attempt, and he had a seven kilo PR on the bench press from the Arnold till now. So that set us up very well for the deadlift. Since deadlift is his weakest lifts, we want to maximize as much as we could out of the squat and bench, which are his lifts, and then just take whatever's there on the deadlift, even if it's not a PR, to try and get that PR total. All right, and on top of the deadlift not being a strongest lift, the thing that holds him back, like I said, his grip so we've had issues in the past couple meets where he hasn't been able to match his PR maybe even just under his PR because he would lose his grip about halfway up or maybe even at lockout so his PR from 255 was actually from a few meets ago and we haven't been able to match that since then and so during this training cycle we've also been testing out different things normally he does a mixed grip but we're working on hook grip with the smaller hands, it is difficult to get a good hip grip and it not be painful. So we're working on slowly building up the weight to get used to the pain and holding that at the top of reps. So if he's doing whatever, 405 pounds, trying to hold the top with hook grip for five seconds, 10 seconds to build up that pain tolerance and build up that strength in that hook grip and make sure it is locked in. But what we notice as we're going through the training cycle is around that 405 pounds is where the limit was currently for his hook grip, and it was gonna take time to build it up into the 500s and 600s. So once we figured out, hey, we might sign up for this meet, we also started bringing in the mixed grip as well, and doing the mixed grip with heavier weights, and doing the same thing, trying to hold it three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, to again, build up that mixed grip strength with the heavier weights. And from time to time during his sessions, during the back off sets where we might be doing more reps, if you want to use straps, use straps to make sure getting the volume in and not being limited by the pain from the grip or losing the grip. But actually one thing Jonathan tried out recently going into the meet, ended up trying out with the meet, was doing a mixed grip but also hooking the thumbs. I know it sounds weird, but he felt more comfortable where he's doing the mixed grip. That way if it rolls out of one hand, it rolls into the other hand. And if it rolls out of the other the underhand, it rolls into the overhand. But then also doing the hook grip on top of it to just lock in by trapping the thumb in there between the bar and the fingers to lock it in further so it doesn't slip out of his mix grip like he's done before. So he did this mix grip hook grip during his warm-ups, everything felt good. He held at the top, no pain, no issues. So we opened up with 230 kilos, about 507, when his PR is 255, about 562. That way, we can start gauging, again, this new grip and his grip for the day with a lighter weight that we know he can do for sure. So he smoked the 230, no issues. He said everything felt good, everything was locked in. So I said, okay, let's take a bigger jump. The original plan was 242.5, 535 to just go just under his PR so that we can build that total, like I said. 
But since everything was feeling good, the squat felt strong, the bench felt strong, the grip is feeling good. So, okay, let's go a little bit more. Let's go 245 kilos, 539. That way we can set up to try and tie his PR maybe and go for a PR if the 245 goes well as well. So we went with 245 on a second attempt. And again, that went up fine, the grip was fine. Obviously, it's a little bit slower than the 230 since we took a 15 kilo jump and it is getting closer to his max. So at that point is when I started running different numbers. What kind of total are we gonna get if we go with 250 or 252 or 255 or 257 and seeing, okay, how much of a PR total is that? Where does that rank us in the US? Where does that rank us internationally? And figuring out based on our goals, which one we wanna risk and which one we wanna go for to basically attain that goal that's most important to us. So what we end up deciding on is to tie the PR on 255 since we haven't hit a number of meets. Let's just tie the PR on deadlift and build a big total, which would have given us 697 kilo total when his PR from March is 677 kilos. So putting on 20 kilos on his total from March till now, when you're already that high level is obviously really good. So that's what we decided to go with. And you can see that that attempt, I mean, it was obviously more difficult, but it moved fairly well as well. And they probably had a little bit more than them. Obviously how much more he had would just depend on what the limit of that grip is since we haven't gone that heavy with that mixed hook grip. But obviously overall, it's still a success going eight for nine, getting the American record on the squat, getting the American record on bench press, tying his PR on the deadlift, putting together that 20 kilo total PR and having the number three all-time best total for raw 66 kilo class on open IPF behind Charles and Sergey. And just for this year in the US, his total from March to 677 was already the number one total for the weight class, but obviously it was nice to put on another 20 kilos and just bump it up further and be that much closer to the all-time best total in the American record, which is at 705.5. So we're only nine kilos from breaking that record at 697. And actually if we had gotten this 264 on the second attempt squat and gone the 273 on the third attempt when we were able to knock that out, that would have set us up exactly for 706, which was our top end goal. So that was the only thing we missed out on on this day was that balance issue on the second attempt to not be able to attempt the 273 to then set us up for that total for that perfect day. So not a perfect day. And when you compete, you may not have a perfect day. You may have two options for your third attempts or maybe even three options for your third attempt, like a low, middle, high, or like an average day and a below average day and a above average day. And you may not hit above average on every single attempt and have that perfect day every time. Sometimes things just align and you're at a good need, rehydration feels good, there's enough lifters in the flight so you have plenty of rest and everything like that and you execute everything perfect. And there's some days where you're just a little bit off. One discipline may be off or maybe even one attempt within one discipline may be off and you go eight for nine or seven for nine or even if you go nine for nine but you have to take a little bit more conservative and you hit a lot of goals still. You hit a PR here, you broke a record there. You end up putting together that PR total as well but it's not the perfect day. But as a competitor, you still have to see that as a success and be happy with it. I see a lot of times where people kind of see it as like a binary thing where either you have a perfect day and you're happy and you're successful or you have a not perfect day and you're just like, you know, terrible and you're depressed and you feel like you're never gonna be good enough to be the best. So obviously the same thing happens with Jonathan. He's a little disappointed that he wasn't able to execute the second better on the squat because the third attempt went so easily and he knew he had that squat in him and he would have had that total in him, but he's still happy that he was able to, you know, do a meet, get motivated, execute those numbers in a competition to break the American records again, build up his total, get higher up that list, get closer to being a national champion and being able to go to Worlds. So overall a successful day, end up winning the best lifter award as well by a couple of points over some other strong lifters in the afternoon session. So overall a very good day for him. And now going forward, what we're doing is we're assessing those lifts. Same thing you should do when you compete. You should look at how your training went leading into it, what numbers you hit in the competition and whether they match. Were your competition numbers better than your gym numbers? Were they the same? Were they worse? If they're worse, why? What technical issues do you need to work on? Do you need to improve your warm up in the competition? Do you need to improve your attempt selection? Was your weight cut off? And so things that you need to assess and then make those adjustments going forward in the training. So the big thing we're gonna to continue to focus on going forward is working on that deadlift grip. So now that he's tried out this mixed hook grip and he likes it, we wanna test out with heavier weight and see what the limit it is. If he can do, for example, 280 or 285 kilos with straps, 
but he can only do 255 kilos without straps, then we want to see how can we cover that gap since he has the strength, obviously, for that 285, let's say. So if this mixed hook grip can get us closer to that 285, then we know that this is going to be a good grip for him where he can handle heavier loads and be able to get his max with this grip closer to what his leg strength is actually at with the straps. And since that is also his weakest lift, and for a lot of people that is their strongest lift and it's the last up of the competition, oftentimes we're like number one, the subtotal, and then we go into the deadlift, and maybe after the first or second attempt, we've already fallen in a couple of spots because of these other big pullers. And then if grip is an issue on the third attempt, we've missed our third attempt before, like at Raw Nationals, and that's knocked us off in the first place spot, and we have to try and just hold off for second place. So if we can fix this issue and build this deadlift up closer to what these other people are hitting, then obviously having the best subtotal going into deadlift and then being comparable with them on deadlift, then we can maintain that first place position through the first, second, and third attempt deadlifts to be able to secure that national title that he's been trying to chase for a few years. All right, so hopefully you like this little meet recap and going over the attempt selection strategy of what our plan was going in and the adjustments we made on the day of, and then what kind of assessment we made from the meet results and what kind of changes we want to make to the training cycle going forward, as this is the same thing you should be doing whether you're a beginner lifter or an advanced lifter you do want to track whatever numbers you want to track and then compete and assess whether those numbers are trending in the direction you want or they're trending in the direction you don't want and then if they're trending in the wrong direction then you need to figure out you or with your coach what the issue was and what adjustments you can make going forward that way you're not doing the same thing over and over again and producing those same bad meat results over and over again. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a like. If you didn't like it, you can dislike it. You can subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this. This week might only be one or two videos just cause I'm catching up on all my work and also we have Thanksgiving coming up. So I hope you guys have a good Thanksgiving and a good weekend and I'll see you in the next one.